All right. So our goal in this chapter is to introduce the fundamental concepts of motion and to review the basic mathematical problems. So um, you have probably had, maybe you had physics in high school. You, when did, maybe you had trig a while ago. Does anybody remember trig? Maybe, maybe not. You know what, it's okay. We're gonna go through it all. So we're gonna review it as we go along. We'll, we'll dust off the, the, the brain cobwebs. It's fine. I know it could have been a couple years ago. That's okay, we're gonna go through it. In fact, we're having a little project today. <laughs> we're gonna, for your break today, in about 10 minutes, I want you guys to go out and measure the height of the church steeple. Okay? You're not allowed to Google it, okay? But you have to use some other way to find the height of the church steeple, okay? It's gonna be kind of an estimation, but Kind of not. What's an estimation? What does it mean if I estimate something? Yeah, it's a it's an educated guess. Okay, it's it's informed by a little bit of fact. For example, um, I know that if I take a step, so one step for me, that's about a meter. Okay, this is a big hint here. I'm telling you. Okay, so if I take one step. That's about, that's about three feet, right? We know that three feet is a yard and a yard is kind of a meter, okay? So if you ever, in this class, we're gonna use a lot of meters because feet and inches suck. Don't use them, okay? We're the only civilized country in the world that still use feet and inches. Why? It's stupid. Just kidding. Although if you have tools, you will think it's stupid because Everything, I have like a 7 16 wrench, a 5 16 wrench. Why? Why can't we just use millimeters? Well, because uh, we have the standard system, which I guess is fine. But, uh, so that means that uh, all of my tools are in standard, but if I get apart from my colleagues in, uh, in, 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 the, uh, in the European Union, they use metric. And so now I have to have both sets of tools and, Sets. That's fine. Um, but in physics, we use SI units. So we use meters, uh, centimeters, and decameters, and feet and inches aren't stupid. I shouldn't have said that. Um, but yes, so we're going to calculate the height of the church steeple. If you are online, are you guys still there? Online friends, are you there? Yeah. Awesome. Thumbs up. All right. Um, so you guys find something by your house or wherever you live, if it's safe and find the height of that tall thing. It could be a telephone pole. Uh, since we're here, we're going to use the church steeple. Uh, and I want you to go out there. You can work with a buddy, find the height and come back. And that's going to be your in-class problem for today. You need to write out a page and explain how did you find the height and what's your uncertainty? What is uncertainty? Does anybody know what uncertainty is? What is uncertainty? Yeah, it could be kind of how much you're off by. So if you do a measurement, so I can, you know, I can measure the length of this room. Let me do a, an estimate of my length, of the length of this room. I'm going to walk across and say, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19.1 meters. That's pretty accurate, right? You're like, wow, how did Dr. Winsby? make such an accurate measurement with his feet. That's pretty accurate, right? Do you believe that? I'd say that's actually 9.15 meters. That's how precise I am. Do you guys believe that? Is my uncertainty really uh, one centimeter? Now I measured 19 and a little bit extra. It looked like maybe 0.1. 
But is that is that how accurate I really am? What do you guys think my uncertainty in that measurement was? So I I said I measured it was 19. So I'd say okay, uh, that means the room is about 60 feet across, or 20 meters, maybe 19 meters. So what's my uncertainty in that measurement? How much could I be off by? Do you think? Could I be off by five meters? Maybe not five. What about one meter? Could I be off by one meter? Okay, so that seems about, what about two meters? Could I be off by two meters? Really, you think I'm that in Okay, so I, could, I would say then that the room is 19 meters plus or minus two. Okay, that's my uncertainty because, I mean, although I think my steps are pretty accurate, realistically, I can't get within uh, plus or minus two meters, which means that the room could be anywhere from 21 meters long to uh, 17 meters long. So there's some variation there because just walking like that is... Uh, it's, um, it's not very accurate. Now, what if I'm measuring a longer distance? What's going to happen to my uncertainty if I'm trying to measure something like that that's even bigger? It's going to be what? It's probably going to be bigger, right? Because the more steps that I take, every time I take a step, there's a little bit un of uncertainty. So if my uncertainty in a meter is, say, 0.2 meters, and then I take 100 steps. Well, my uncertainty is also going to be multiplied by that, the number of steps I take. Okay? And that's, that's an important concept in physics, which is one reason why physicists only use SI units. Because there was this case at uh, NASA where some uh, physicists at NASA realized, or they thought they realized, that an asteroid was going to hit the Earth. Well, Obviously, we're still here, so it didn't hit it. You probably would have heard about that. It turned out that as they were converting from inches to feet uh, to miles, that they had a conversion error. So they were off by like 30,000 30, miles. Okay? It's because inches and I don't know, whatever their conversion was, and it's confusing. Right? Even for physicists, it, it can be confusing. So to keep things simple, we use SI units, so kilometers, meters, uh, and distance isn't so bad, but when you get into things like mass and weight, then pounds gets really crazy, okay? You don't wanna, you don't wanna use pounds, trust me. All right, so here, one of the things we're gonna do is we're gonna uh, represent motion by the stop diagram. So if this bird is flying, then um, if it's traveling at a constant velocity, um, if the, let's say the, um, the, <coughs> the camera takes a picture every 0.1 seconds, okay, it, then I, if I know what the, how long the bird is, I could calculate its velocity from this, okay? So I could say, all right, I know what my time scale is. So this would be 0.1 seconds, 0.2 seconds, 0.3 seconds, 0.4 seconds. And it, if my bird, that looks like kind of a big owl, let's say it's probably, or a big hawk maybe, that looks like a hawk. So it's probably about one meter. Okay, so I can look at this and I can say, all right, from, um, it looks like it's traveled maybe about, let's see. All right, why don't you guys look at that picture do a little calculation right now and tell me what you how fast you think the bird is traveling you can feel free to change my estimate because i'm just saying i think it's a meter long and let's say if the time stamp was 0.1 seconds apart between each of the little snapshots figure out where its velocity is or speed go ahead and calculate it right now and then uh for those of you online, also uh, calculate it. And then we'll start putting answers up here. 
Oh, but wait, actually it's break time. Okay, we'll do this when we get back. All right, so for your break time, I'll give you till about, let's say uh, five after 12. We're pretty close to the church. Okay, so you got 15 minutes to go out and measure the height of the church steeple. Okay, don't look on the internet. Don't do that. But um, come back and, oh, wait. Uh, now, yeah, so come back and uh, you can work with a buddy uh, and tell me how tall it is. So come back here in 15 minutes. I'll go out there too, actually. I'm going to try and measure it as well.
All right, we are back. Are you still there, online friends? Yes. All right. So um, maybe my online friends, what did you measure and what did you, uh, how tall was it? And what do you think your uncertainty was? Uh, you can either put it in the chat or you can um, just say it if you want to. I measured the like point of my house and I got 26.25 feet and I'm not really sure what the uncertainty is with what I did. <laughs> okay. How many stories is your house? Um, it the part I measured was the garage and like an addition above the garage. Okay, so it's about a two story house. Uh, that doesn't seem unreasonable. Okay. What do you think your uncertainty was? Um, I'm not sure. Okay. All right. What about um, Logan? What did you What did you measure, and um, what was your What was your uncertainty? Do you think? You can also put it in the chat. Okay. It says. Um, Measured a telephone pole and got 11.56 meters and uncertainty of 1.5 to 2 meters. Okay. So 11, so 11 meters. Okay. All right. Well, let's talk about the, um, the church steeple. So um, I will, let's see, I'm going to put it, I'll make a, an, annotation thing. All right, so what were some measurements we got for the church? Somebody tell me your numbers. What did you get? 68 meters. And then what was that plus or minus? What do you think? Plus or minus 10. Okay, well. All right, so we'll say plus or minus. Oh, there used to be a symbol. Plus or minus 10 meters. All right. What else? What else? You got, oh, yeah. Fifty-two meters, plus or minus ten. Okay, what'd you get? Twenty-one point one two meters, plus or minus three. All right. What else did we get? Anybody? All right. Well, I will also. So. No one else had any other measurements? What'd you get? 55 meters plus or minus 10. So 55 meters plus or minus 10 meters. Whoops. All right. Now let's see here. I, I'll do, I'll put mine here. Um, I got, I would say 75 plus or minus maybe six meters. I don't know. Okay. So we've got, um, we've got a bunch of measurements here. Okay. So let's compute, let's compute our average value. Okay. So sometimes when you take data, you'll get uh, many different data points, okay? And um, you'll get a wide range of um, values. And so we have to make a judgment and say, um, okay, uh, what can we do to kind of give us, um, uh, to make a little bit of sense out of this measurement, okay? Because 
the more data points we get in principle, the more accurate we should be. And so I would say that if we had a thousand people measure the church steeple like that, at the end of the day, it would be, it might be fairly accurate. Okay, so let's, let's figure out um, the average value. And I'm going to go to let's do the whole desktop. There we go. Yes. And let me open my, my Mathematica. So maybe you have Mathematica on your computer um, or you might have MATLAB. You can get MATLAB for free from the university, which is a really big value. So, all right, what were the values? Oh, I think I erased them all. Oh, all right, we'll have to remember. All right, shout your values out to me. I know we had, mine was 75. What else do we have? 55, okay, plus 68. Is there another one? 52, what else? 21.12, what? 40, plus 40, okay, anything else? All right, so we had five, no, six values. Oh, that's pretty good. So six values, we'll divide that by six. Okay, so our average value is 51 meters. Then our uncertainty, we'll say that this is, no. Sorry, I got to turn off my phone. Please turn off your phones in class. Turn the thing off. Um, so, the biggest, what was the biggest uncertainty that we had? Was it 10 meters? Okay, so we'll say then that our measurement for the ch church steeple is 51.8533. And we'll say mm, plus or minus 10 meters. No. We'll say plus or minus 10 meters. Okay, so this is our value here for our measurement. Um, is there anything wrong with this value that we have here? Is this how we should write it? So we've got a lot of digits there. Does that mean that we were more precise? No. It doesn't, because if we're saying we could be off by 10 meters, okay, then we can't really include that 0.8533. That doesn't make any sense, because we're saying that we may have made a mistake of 10 meters, okay, then I can't, uh, well, this, this is kind of meaningless, okay, so I'm just going to, I'm going to write this as a 2 here, but what about the 2? Are we even... Are we accurate enough to say what the height is within two, two meters? So should we keep that two there? Because we're saying we could be off by plus or minus 10 meters. That's a 20 meter range. So should we keep the two there? I mean, yeah. Yes. Yes, exactly. That's what we're trying to decide right now is we're trying to say how many significant figures should our measurement of the church steeple have? Okay. And if, if we're saying that even if our uncertainty was maybe one or two meters, then it really, we should not include any decimals in that number. And even the two there really is kind of meaningless because there's no way that we're that accurate. Okay. So really we're just going to say, it's 50 meters, plus or minus 10, and that's probably pretty close. So we're saying it could be um, up to 60 meters. Did anybody actually look up the church of the height? Okay, well, I guess look it up tonight and then tell me tomorrow. I don't actually know what it is. I, 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 I thought it was 75, but this seems pretty reasonable. I think it's at least 50 meters high. Now, how many feet is that? You could just say, all right, well, uh, one meter is basically three feet, so it's 150 feet tall. So now, is one meter actually three feet? No, one meter is 
39 inches and a yard is 36 inches. So basically one meter is three feet. Okay, and that's a good way to think about it if you think in feet. I think in feet, unfortunately, but that's okay. All right, so we did our significant figures. And if there's a zero in our number, the zero is not a significant figure. So if you look at this, you'd say, all right, there's one significant figure. And so anything above that, I can't say for sure. So our number based off of our measurement that we did is 50 meters plus or minus 10 meters, okay? So uh, back to this problem, okay? So if I say here, I'm gonna draw this, I'm gonna draw on here, okay? So if I say my first, oh, that's not it. I don't want blue, I want red. All right, so if I say my bird here, all right, he starts at this position and each frame is 0.1 seconds, all right? And let's say he travels a meter, all right? Then if I get out to here, so this is one, two, and I'm saying that between each of these lines here, this took my camera 0.1 seconds, okay? Then, and I, let's say he moves about a meter during that time. If I say, all right, my bird, my bird's about a meter long, and so this distance here is a meter, okay? Then it looks like he's going about one meter per uh, 0.1 seconds. So I'd say that my hawk is going 10 meters per second, okay? So that's pretty, that's pretty fast. 10 meters per second, okay? Now, maybe that's, maybe that's too fast, but uh, when hawks dive, they go pretty fast. I don't think it's unreasonable, but we don't actually know. We need to get more precise measurements. We'd actually have to like know the dimensions of the hawk and know what the time scale was, okay? So I don't actually know that for this one, but that's fine, okay? But this would be our, um, all right. So this is how we would do motion capture, right? And the velocity of animals and humans is very important for how they eat. Because one thing, you, uh, an animal, um, depending on the speed that they have to travel, their calorie intake has to be high enough to maintain that speed. So for example, if you were a cheetah, okay, cheetahs run super fast, but they can only do it for a very short amount of time. And so uh, in order for the cheetah to survive, you have to say, all right, the cheetah, it has to catch its prey in this amount of time. And if it expends too much energy, it's, it's not gonna have enough energy to hunt anymore. And then it won't be able to catch its prey and it will ultimately die. And so um, things that determine animals biology are um, their speed, what kind of prey that they hunt and what their environment is like, okay? And so the amount of energy it takes for an animal to run at a certain speed um, is very relevant to the prey that they're catching, okay? And uh, it turns out that what kind of uh, prey that an animal is, is eating has a lot to do with its size, okay? So like the blue whale, um, one of my colleagues here, Dr. Jean Poppin, does amazing research with blue whales. He's a theoretical physicist but he works closely with a bunch of biologists. In fact, that's all he does. And that's what they do. They look at, well, how much energy does it take for the blue whale to go from one school of krill to another? Because these patches of krill in the ocean, they're pretty far away. And so that means that a blue whale has to be able to go fast enough and get from one place to another without expending too much energy. And then, when a blue whale opens its mouth, um, they've got really cool videos of this. The mouth opens into this huge thing and it gobbles up like over a ton of krill at once, okay? And so it's really important that when it, when it eats all these krill, it gets enough energy so that it can keep hunting. Because if, you're, um, if you use too much energy, you're not gonna be able to survive. So its metabolism is very, very important. And 
Um, blue whales are the biggest animal that's ever lived. They're even bigger than dinosaurs. So, um, and I, my son is five and he would always get in uh, really huge fights with me because he's like, no dad, a T-Rex is bigger than a blue whale. I'm like, no, the blue whale is the biggest. The blue whale is the biggest animal that has ever lived. So right now is the time we are living with the biggest animal that's ever lived in the history of the earth. It's a blue whale. And the question is, why did a blue whale get so big? Because they started out as sort of like these, I don't know, hippopotamus things, right? They lived on land, and for some reason they went back into the ocean, and, and now we've gotten to the point where they're these huge mammals. But they were originally, when they started evolving, about the size of a horse, or maybe a hippopotamus. They weren't really big, but uh, you know, over the course of evolution, many things happened. But the food that they were eating and um, their speed, the coefficient of drag, had a big impact on their evolutionary biology. So the reason that everything is the way it is is because of physics. For example, have you ever seen a spider bigger than your house? Me either, thank goodness. Um, but why is that? Why can't spiders get bigger than people? Why can't we have ants that are um, the size of a car? Or did you guys watch King Kong versus Godzilla? Oh my gosh. Okay, that's your homework for this week. You need to go watch King Kong versus Godzilla. Because why can't we have animals that are as big as King Kong? Is there a reason that we couldn't have um, a creature get that big? Right? Why couldn't King Kong? get to be the size of a skyscraper. What do you guys think? Yes. It, it, yeah, it could, yeah. Um, so their oxygen level could be one thing. I mean, to support all of that tissue, so, I mean, I don't even know how big King Kong is, but they're gonna have to take in massive amounts of oxygen. What, what else could be a reason? So we've got oxygen, yeah. Yeah, maybe like its heart, maybe the it, King Kong's heart couldn't actually pump blood to all that tissue, right? Because now you're talking about, okay, the heart has to pump blood through um, hoses that are, you know, maybe 100 meters long. I don't know what, how far his heart from his hand would be, but his heart would have to pump blood all the way out to the very end of his body. Uh, and pr presumably his his heart was several stories above his head, okay? So just the strain of trying to pump that blood up to his head, that might be difficult. What else might make it, it hard? That's a good one, volume to surface area. What, what else? And oxygen level, those are good things. What about his bones? Could a mammal, if, because presumably all mammals have somewhat similar bone material, right? So if he was that big, would his bones actually be able to support his body? Because I mean, if he took a step, you know, I mean, you're talking about a massive amount of, of weight. So I'll send you a link. There's actually a great article in Gizmodo about uh, a physicist talks about why King Kong can't actually exist because uh, it's just, there's too many things wrong with it. Um, and it turns out now that um, they, th you remember, did you guys see Jurassic Park, the first one, where there's that T-Rex running after the, um, the Jeep? Well, it turns out the T-Rexes were so big that probably if they would have tried to run, it would have shattered their legs. And so they think now that probably T-Rexes really couldn't run that fast. In fact, they probably were just scavengers and ate like dead, dead things on the ground, which is not as exciting as in Jurassic Park, but there's some debate about, well, okay, if could, a, could an animal that big actually run? And I think they even show a T-Rex jumping in the movie. Well, if something that big actually tried to jump, it would probably shatter all the bones in its legs. So there's a reason that 
the physics tells us why things are the way that they are, the size of animals. Um, why do uh, things hunt at a certain speed? So let me erase this stuff. All right. So in this chapter, we're going to be um, describing motion. We're going to make these stop motion videos. I made one on YouTube. If you haven't found my YouTube channel yet, you should. Lots of great physics videos. I'll try and post all the lectures from this class on YouTube. So if you miss the class, well, you shouldn't miss the class, but uh, they will be on YouTube. I'll try and upload them. All right. So we're gonna we're gonna try and use motion capture to find living things' velocity because velocity is very important for most things of for how they eat. Um, so we can use stop motion cameras, but we need to define what is the difference between velocity and speed. What is the difference between velocity and speed? Um, all these things have num numbers and units that go with them, right? So when you look at your speedometer in your car, does that tell you the speed or your velocity? Yeah, it tells you your instantaneous speed. What is your, what's velocity? What's the difference between speed and velocity? Yeah. Velocity also has a direction associated with it, okay? So speed, if you just look at the speedometer in your car, that just tells you how fast your wheels are spinning. But if you think about, well, what's your velocity, okay? Let's say you start in a, a city street over here, okay, you going down the street. Well, if you're driving in a straight line, then your speed and velocity are the same thing. But if your origin is, say, right here, but if you turn the corner now and you start moving down this way, then I draw a line between your, the origin and over here, okay? So, and that difference, um, then I, ha I also have a, a direction associated with it, right? So there's, not just uh, meters per second, but I also need to know the direction. Am I traveling west or south? What direction? Let's see. Can you guys? Oh, wait. I have a virtual background on, so you can't see the board because it thinks there is a green screen. Oh, there we go. So everyone online was seeing galaxies. Okay. All right, so if, I, if I'm moving this way, then uh, my, I can look at my speedometer and that tells me my speed, but velocity also has a direction, right? So now I didn't show you this before we went out there, but here is our review of, well, or one of them. We'll go over this again, but of course you, uh, hopefully you fit, you remembered in trigonometry, okay, if you know the angle and you know one of the sides, then you can calculate what another side of the triangle was, okay? So we can use trigonometry to calculate the, the height of the church steeple, okay? Of course, it helps if you can actually measure the distance from the thing, so we would know, we would know the opposite side, Right? or the adjacent side of our triangle. If we knew that, then we can easily calculate the other side. Okay? So we're not gonna do any calculus in here, but we will use these trig identities a lot and we'll go over them again. Um, and of course, we're also gonna use the Pythagorean theorem, uh, but we will, we will continue to uh, go through it. Okay. So let's do an example here. So please calculate this really quickly on your calculator. What is the length of the hypotenuse of my triangle? Okay, so uh, today I'm, I'm gonna have you, I want you to turn in to me 
um, your calculations for the, chief, the church steeple, you can, uh, if, you don't, if you don't have a piece of paper, you can email it to me today after class. But also put your calculations for this on there as well. Write it out. Show me how you do it. You can use your calculator, of course. On my test, too, you'll be able to use your calculator, okay? So you can use the scientific calculator. I don't care what calculator you use, but I want you to actually calculate this. So dust off your calculator, get it out. Uh, hopefully you have a just a calculator. Now, I know your phones, of course, uh, if you've never heard of Wolfram Alpha, it's an app you can get on your phone. Um, I don't really allow phones on tests because they have the internet, but So what is the length of the hypotenuse of the triangle? How could we solve this? Do we need trig for this or what else could we use? You can also talk to a buddy. Well, I guess we're not really close to each other anymore. Things are still weird, but we're getting we're getting back to normal. You know, I know for me, uh, I have a little bit. I need some time to not wear a mask in public anymore. So I'm still a little freaked out, but I'm gonna get there. So, but that's okay. At least we're all here together, which is really exciting because I don't think anybody wants to have Zoom classes anymore. Maybe if you do, but. It's so much better in person, but Zoom will try and keep it interesting as well. So, all right, does everybody have their answer? What can we use to solve this problem? Yes, the Pythagorean theorem, who was also a cultist that lived on a Greek island. He had a math cult. I don't know what they did on the island, but apparently one of the cultists escaped and that's the only reason we know the Pythagorean theorem, because this cult is like, I don't know, got away. So maybe, I haven't seen The Handmaid's Tale, but maybe it's like that except with math. So I don't know, it's a Greek thing, they lived on an island. So anyways, one of the cultists escaped and they took the Pythagorean theorem with them. And that's the only thing that we know from this cult. All right, so we can use the Pythagorean theorem to solve this. So A squared plus B squared equals C squared, uh, let's actually do it, okay? I've got, here I'm gonna use the Mathematica, so we've got, we have, we'll say eight, no. Okay, we'll say eight, eight squared plus, no, plus six squared equals, so 100 and the square root of 100 is 10. So we'll say, there we go. So it's gonna be 10. So hopefully you picked C, okay? So put this on your calculations that you send to me for the church steeple. Um, all right, so Pythagorean theorem, all right. So we talked about what is the difference between speed and velocity. Okay, but let's let's vote anyways. Hopefully you remember what I said. All right. What's the difference between speed and velocity? Is it A, speed is an average quantity, um, while velocity is not? Uh, is it B, velocity contains information about the direction of motion while speed does not? Speed is measured in miles per hour, or velocity is, velocity is measured in meters per second. Or speed is used to measure how fast an object moves in a straight line. All right, let's take a vote. Is it A? Raise your hand. If you're online, put the answer in the chat. Does anybody vote for A? No? All right. Is it B? Velocity contains information about direction. Raise your hand, put it in the chat if you, whatever you think your answer is. All right, I don't, oh, what does the chat say? 
Oh, yes. Okay, we got some votes in the chat. Uh, I think everybody, yes, do you have a question? Okay. Is it C? I think everybody voted for B. Um, the correct answer is B. Wait, no. Did anybody not vote for B? I didn't see. Okay. Uh, but yes, the answer is B. It contains direction about uh, the direct, it contains information about the direction while speed does not. Speed just tells you how quickly your, your wheels are moving at a, at a certain time. So it's just your instantaneous velocity. Well, it doesn't tell you direction. Okay. All right. Oh, we just did this one. How many significant figures does this number contain? And this is in your book too. So if you don't know it now, start reading chapter one. This is all in chapter one. All right. So how many significant figures does this contain? Um, is it one A? Raise your hand if you think it's A. Is it B2? Or C3, and put your answers in the chat too if you're online. Um, or is it D4 or E5? Well, I think everybody, we've, we've got a lot of Cs because it says 2.67, okay? So those first three numbers, if it's not zero, that's a significant digit. That's how accurately we measured that quantity okay uh, and then we're saying times 10 to the 3 so that's 2670 uh, in scientific notation usually we always write our numbers in scientific notation so you take the first two or three numbers and then you multiply it by 10 to the power of 3 or whatever so 10 to the power of 3 that means it's this number times ten, three tens, so that basically it tells you the number of zeros, so 2.67 times a thousand, okay? So we have three significant digits, so the answer is C. All right, let's go on. All right, what are the correct SI units for distance and mass? And again, this is all in the textbook. So let's see if you know the answer. Is it A, feet and pounds? Put your answer in the chat if you're online. Or is it B, centimeters and grams? Or C, meters and grams? Or D, meters and kilograms? Yes. Uh, I didn't see everybody vote. Okay, well, it's. Yes, the answer is the answer is um, D. We always use meters and kilograms. Sometimes you can do things in centimeters, but you always need to convert back to meters. My general rule of thumb is do everything in kilometers or sorry meters and kilograms. Uh, so it's that way you don't make a mistake doing a conversion. Okay. Uh, Okay, so here is a question. If Sam walks 100 meters to the right, and this is a vector question, okay, so um, we can have several different kinds of vectors. We could have a position vector, or we could have a velocity vector, okay? Uh, a position vector just tells you how far you are away from a certain point. So usually your origin, okay? So let's say I'm standing here. My origin, let's say zero is right here at the edge of this desk, okay? Then um, I'm gonna go tw I'm gonna go 10 meters this way, okay? So I'll say one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, okay? So, there's a position vector that points from the edge of the desk to me that is 10 meters long. That's my position. So if we're using a one-dimensional length scale, then there's a, uh, it'd be positive 10 because positive is always to the right. 
Okay. My position over there would be 10 meters out of the 10. If here's my origin and you're looking at it this way, if I go five meters this way, one, two, three, four, five, then my position vector is minus five this way. So if my axis is going along this way, so positive would be over that way. Positive is always to the right. That's just what convention we use. So then if I was over there, it would be minus five, okay? So here's our question. Uh, Sam walks 100 meters to the right. So he goes 100 meters that way. And then he, from there, he gets 100 meters over there. Then he walks 200 meters back the other way. What is his final position? And in this problem, we're saying uh, what his net displacement vector, we want to know which way is it pointing. Okay, so we're just asking about the direction of this. All right, so um, is it A, he points to the right? Okay, so how many people think it's A? He points to the right. B points to the left. Okay, and put if you're online, put your answer in the chat. Okay, so I think a lot of people voted for uh, C or no, or C has zero length. Uh oh, or D cannot tell without more information. Well, this one's not too bad because. He walks 100 meters to the right, so he's 100 meters that way. Then if he starts from over there and goes 200 meters back the other way, now he's going to his, wait, yeah, okay. So yes, then he would, the, his, his position vector is going to point to the left. So the answer is D. All right. So, this is trickier. A velocity vector, does it point in the same direction as the displacement? So we got, we've talked about two different velocity vectors, okay? And, um, sorry, no, we've talked about two different types of vectors. There's displacement and there is Velocity, okay, so let's do an example. Let's think about this battery. So if I throw this battery up in the air, it's gonna have a displacement vector as it's flying through the air. Okay, so here's my battery. So its displacement is getting farther away from my hand if my hand is the origin. So it starts here at y equals zero. So we say, well, y is up this way. So if I throw it up in the air, okay, it's going to have a non-zero displacement vector, and it's always going to be pointing up. So its displacement vector will always be pointing up this way, but its velocity is changing, right? So on its way up, the velocity is going this way. It's moving up, okay? But then when it gets to the very tippy top, just right at the top, it stops, okay? And so when it goes up to the very top, the velocity vector of the battery is gonna be zero. So just for a briefest of instant, the very top, it's not moving, it stops right up there. And then its velocity vector changes and starts to come back down. So on the way down, its velocity vector is pointing down. Um, and, um, and so that's opposite to the displacement. Let me draw a a picture. All right, so initially we'll call this the, this is my displacement vector. All right, so there's my displacement vector. And here's my, this is my battery. And oh, that's a terrible battery. Um, Let's do, all right, let's do a circle. So I'm throwing a ball up in the air. Okay, so initially its displacement is going up. And while the ball is 
flying upwards, then it has a, a, a velocity vector that's going up, okay? So when it gets to the top, when it's at the very, very top, right? Its velocity is zero. It stops there just for a second, okay? Um, and then as it starts to move back down, now my velocity vector is pointing this way because it, now it's falling, but my displacement vector is still pointing up. So the displacement vector um, doesn't necessarily need to point in the direction of the displacement. It might be opposite, okay? So, so velocity vectors point in the same direction as displacement vector, no. In the opposite direction, no. Perpendicular to the displacement vector, no. So, well, sometimes. Um, in the same accelerate acceler direction as the acceleration vector, maybe. But velocity is not represented by a vector. Hmm, okay. Let's go and see what it says. In the same direction as the displacement vectors. Is that true? That doesn't seem right to me. I think that one's wrong. Well, anyways, that's all for today. So I'll see you again tomorrow. I don't think that's right. I think in the same direction as the displacement vector, sometimes, but not always. All right, well, thanks for being here today. I really appreciate you actually being in the class and of course on Zoom. I'm glad you guys are here today as well. So um, either um, hand me a piece of paper with your work on it or you can email it to me. That's fine, either one's fine. Um, whatever works best for you. So, all right, my online friends, are you guys okay? Um, so will it work this way every day that we'll just send you a picture of like our classwork for the day? Yeah, that's fine. Yeah. Okay. And you want it sent on email? Yeah, you can send it by email. Yeah. Okay. Cause if you can't, if you can't actually make it, then that's fine. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Have a good day. Thank Thanks. Thank you. Yeah. Yes. Yes. And, uh, uh, have the test dates been announced yet for when the test? Um, so I'm going to put those on there. I have them tentatively in the Pearson calendar. Okay. Uh, but I'm still deciding um, how many chapters are going to be on each test. So I'll probably figure those out either today or tomorrow. The first one is going to be not this Thursday, but next Thursday. And that will be, I think, over, so probably chapters one and two. I'll have to look at the schedule. Okay, perfect. So let me see if I wrote this right. Thank you. Yes. Yes, I can put them on, um, probably put them on Blackboard. Yes. Okay. Thanks. Thank you. For lab, do you need uh, like goggles or anything? Or um, I don't think we need goggles. Um, if we do need safety equipment, then they'll provide it, but okay. we're not going to be dealing with any dangerous chemicals or anything. I mean, we're, I think the first one, you're going to have a pendulum. Thank you. Thank you. So yeah, nothing dangerous you need to be worried about. I think we will, we'll give you all the safety. If you need any safety equipment, then we'll give it to you. Okay, perfect. All right. Thank you. Bye. Hey, Logan, did you have a question? Yeah, I, uh, I sent it in chat. I was just curious if we just had to send in our calculations and like how we calculated for what we measured and then just the other one with the Pythagorean theorem question in class. Is that all yeah. we have to send in? Yeah, so you can um, okay. You can just take a picture of your paper and then send it to me via email. That's probably the best. I, I uh, drew it out of my la iPad. Can I just screenshot that and send it to you? Oh yeah, yeah, that's totally fine too. I don't care just okay. as long as I can see it. it. It doesn't matter how you do it. Okay, that's all I was wondering. All right, well, thanks for coming. So are you gonna Thank be- you. Are you gonna be on Zoom most of the time? 
I so I have to go in for a lab anyways. Oh, okay. But that's only, that's only three days a week, so I was probably just going to come to class on those three days if that works for you. Okay. Yeah, as long as the Zoom does doesn't bother you, then um, it's probably okay with me. Okay. Thank you. All right. See you later. Great afternoon. You too. Bye.